Well, that was fun. The round of 16 in the Champions Cup is done. Let's just, before, before I get into the big picture and my overall takeaways on this weekend and the round of 16, let's just recap on that last 20 minutes of Toulouse against Racing, the final Champions Cup game of the weekend. Oh, that's right. Uh, it wasn't broadcast <laughs> due, due to an issue. I did feel for the guys at um, TNT Sport, I have to say. So I was working on the Champions Cup for the last, what, seven years with, with BT Sport. And let me tell you, when the game is being broadcast in France, I'm absolutely certain, I'm fairly, I'm fairly certain this will not have been TNT Sport's fault. That said, I was watching the French feed and that was fine. So I actually did watch the last 20 minutes of the game so I can bring you up to speed. And what an unbelievable comeback from Racing 92. Did not see that result. No, of course not. Toulouse went on and won comfortably. 31 points to 7. 31 set. A comfortable win for Toulouse. Um, it was... I mean, Toulouse are very, very impressive as a rugby team, aren't they? It probably wasn't as entertaining as that, as that game could have been. It was attritional, but that's just the way Toulouse do it. They... They grind you down and you cannot contain them for a whole game and they will bust you open. And they did in the second half. It was 10-0 at half-time, but in the second half it was tries from uh, Paul Costes, from Peter Aki and from uh, Alexander Ruma, all, all with transformation, uh, courtesy of Blair Kinghorn, the most Scottish name in the world ever. Uh, I mean, it was 31-7, a uh, um, consolation try for Eddie Benaroos. But actually in the first half... There was a point where Racing were looking like they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Toulouse and it was Jack Willis with an unbelievable um, defensive effort to make, make a tackle and then hold up the ball over his own line that kept the 10-point buffer. But Toulouse, man alive, their counter-attack, their skill set, the pace that they could just go with when they flood through a hole. And like I say, um, I think Racing 92 actually gave a good account of themselves, but they could not contain Toulouse. That was the final game of the weekend. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. What have your thoughts been with the round of 16? I actually haven't watched any of the Challenge Cup. I will catch up on those games. But um, yeah, eight games in one weekend is enough uh, with all the other stuff going on. So I, I, don't know if you, I don't know how many of the games you watched, what you've made of it. It's been interesting, some of the comments from people watching in South Africa saying this competition hasn't quite ignited the interest in South Africa just yet, although there were 24,000 people in Cape Town at the stadium watching that game against La Rochelle. So it's building slowly, but it's when you see Toulouse playing, they've won the competition five times. And the, I mean, just newsflash, Antoine Dupont is quite good at rugby. He looks absolutely shredded as well. He's an incredible Nick. And I'll tell you what, it was the point for Toulouse when um, Piatto Malvaca and Emmanuel Mayafu were replaced by Julian Marchand and Thibaut Flamont, that you just go, my goodness me, what a team. Can anyone stop them? Uh, the quarterfinals that I predicted we would see next weekend, well, I predicted there would be one away win out of the eight, and I was correct on that. I just got which game that was in wrong. I thought Bath would get the edge over Exeter, and I thought Stormers would just edge it at home to La Rochelle. They might have done if not for the wind, which um, stopped Marnie Leboc from kicking that conversion. Although, to be fair to Antoine Hastoy, he did nail his kicks when he had the chance in that same wind. So, um, yeah, that's how the quarterfinals actually shape up next weekend. And that is tasty, isn't it? That is some awesome games. Some easier to predict than others. We'll, we'll get into that. Let's have a look at the... Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, TNT Sport. Not rubbing it in on your part. Let's look at the... Um, the way it breaks down. So the results, uh, as we saw them, and it's, Friday night feels a long time ago now, doesn't it? Where Quinns won the game twice, effectively, to come through against Glasgow. Marcus Smith. Uh, and that's the one, one of the things, when I look at the quarter finalists there, the big game players that there are, you've got uh, Marcus Smith for Harlequins with, with Andre Esterhazen up against Damian Penno and, and BL Biere and Luku and just some of those absolute ballers that Bordeaux have got. You look at Toulouse and they've obviously got Dupont, Untermac and the and the rest. But I mean, that's the easiest one to call out of the quarterfinals, isn't it? You can't see a way for Exeter. I mean, what a season they've had, but 
They have beaten Toulouse in Toulouse. They did, I think, back in 2019 or 2020. Was it on the year they won the competition? I think they might have beaten Toulouse, but very, very different Exeter team now. And oh, I don't know. I mean, they'll give it a crack. They'll go there with nothing to lose and no fear. But um, I, I can't I can't see Exeter doing that. But what, what a season those kids for them have had. So basically, yeah, it's the all international season pros of Toulouse against the kids of Exeter. Absolute ballers, Bordeaux v Harlequins. Leinster v La Rochelle, well, all the storylines are already written with the games over the last couple of years. And then Northampton Saints against the Bulls. That That is one of the hardest to call. I don't know. I, I, I'm instinctively thinking Northampton are going to come through that one because they're at home playing so well and the travelling that the Bulls have got to do. But, I mean, the way Northampton play... Um, I just can't wait to see that matchup against the South African teams on that lovely surface, hopefully good weather. And the Bulls have shown the capacity to mix it up physically and then to bust things wide open with Kurt Lee Arenser just playing incredible rugby at the minute. So uh, Arenser against Tommy Freeman is is looking box office. That game looks ace. And am I right? The Storm has beat Northampton in Northampton. So have I got that right? God, my memory... I'm, so I've watched so much rugby, I can't, I can't remember um, what's happened in previous seasons. But anyway, I, I give Bulls a shot there. But you would have to say home advantage, I would think, would come to the fore. And I would expect, although nothing's to be taken for granted, Toulouse, Bordeaux, Leinster and Northampton to come through. Meaning that uh, Leinster would get a home advantage or home country advantage. But the game will be at the Aviva Stadium again uh, in their semi-final. And the game will be in France. Toulouse and Bordeaux aren't, aren't... It's not like they're at different ends of the country. So it'll be interesting to see where that game is actually played. Um, and then the final at, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Whoever makes it to that final, we're in for something very, very special. I already can't wait for the end of May. I love this competition. I actually got someone taking the mickey out of me for how much I say I love this competition and how much I love the World Cup, how much I love... Um, other competitions I just do uh, this as club rugby goes as I've said this is as good as club rugby gets and we definitely saw glimpses of that in, in this weekend I still think as I've said before and I'm not going to go away from saying it um, th there are some issues the fact that six was it snow or was it um, six or seven yeah seven of the games that we saw this weekend were repeat fixed no sorry Five of the games were repeat fixtures from the pool stages. Two of the games were are uh, all same country matchups that we see regularly. So Toulouse v Racing was an example of that. X to v Bath the other, and there was only one that was a fresh fixture, which was that was Quinn's Glasgow, wasn't it? The one that kicked off the weekend. That's that was always going to happen as soon as they came up with the format as they had it. It was, you're more than likely, the same pool that had the best team in that qualified, seed number one, was more likely to have the team that qualified bottom seed and second and 15th and third and 14th and so on. So you were always likely to get this. It was, many people were saying it months ago, but hey, the powers that be can't see what's going on. Um, it's I don't think there is a perfect silver bullet process i think the expanding the competition to 24 teams i think that just diluted the quality a little bit but this weekend there is no dilution of the quality these are 16 outstanding rugby teams i think only leon as i mentioned on the video yesterday let themselves down by not taking it in the manner not taking it as seriously as the competition probably demanded that said i can also totally understand that because from leon's perspective they're in a relegation battle and it would be devastating if they were to be relegated from the top 14. So they need to kind of prioritise that. And it is it is back to back, week to week in the top 14. It was the same with uh, Bayonne in the Challenge Cup. I noticed they put out a weakened team and lost against Edinburgh because they're, you know, they don't want to be dragged into a relegation dogfight. So there's work to be done. As ever, I'm, I'd, I'd love to see a global season. Uh, I'd love to see the people running rugby at the top all the unions sitting round and putting the rugby fan and customers first and 
thinking about the big picture longer term, not just chasing money in the short term. And then we might get the season and the product that we totally deserve. But in the meantime, I'll take the best of a bad situation. And the Champions Cup this weekend has been pretty bloody good. And I can't wait for the quarterfinals next weekend. We've got four big matches over next weekend and the Challenge Cup quarterfinals as well. What more do you want? This is ticket every week that we've got this rugby is getting us a week closer to those international games coming up in the summer. And there's uh, lots to enjoy between now and then. If you enjoy the content on the channel, uh, I would absolutely love it if I would earn your subscription. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Uh, what do you make of the quarterfinal lineup? Who do you see coming through? Do the away teams actually have a shot? Um, just that Leinster La Rochelle. I keep, in fact, every time I look at one of the fixtures, I get excited. But especially Leinster La Rochelle. That is spicy. Bring it on. Right. Uh, signing out for the time being. But I'll be back on the channel soon enough. So uh, hit subscribe. See you on the next one.